One man is dead after an officer involved shooting in Wilmore. We'll have more on that coming up. We're tracking the investigation into a Lexington break-in. Police say thieves got their hands on items in dozens of storage units. And the UK community is continuing to mourn the loss of a student. Coming up, how one group will honor him tomorrow night. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. We're tracking an officer-involved shooting in Jessamine County. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Kentucky State Police are working the case out of Wilmore, where the shooting happened early this morning. They say Wilmore police officers had been to the home before, were familiar with the victim, and went out today because the man was on the phone with a suicide hotline. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is talking with that man's neighbors. She has our top story at 6. Now, this all took place just blocks away from Asbury University's campus when Kentucky State Police say the Wilmore Police Department came out to a home here on Hinkle Street. Neighbors living in the area say sometime after midnight, they started hearing something unusual in the typically quiet town. Burst of three loud percussive bangs, um, which I thought somebody maybe was setting off really big fireworks. Joe Watts says he never imagined what was actually unfolding just across from his home. But maybe like half an hour later or less, it happened again, um, and it was a little after that I started hearing voices, um, like kind of talking loudly, and then I heard um, overlapping percussive bangs. Kentucky State Police say when the Wilmore officers showed up at the home around 1:15, 40-year-old Michael Foster was already standing outside with a gun when some sort of confrontation took place and gunfire broke out. A lot of families, there's a lot of kids on the street. Um, that's always my that's my biggest worry with it. I mean, who knows where. Those bullets go, and then they could go into a home or uh, through a window, and so it's it's hard to explain, but it does feel different. It's you know to think it's such a small town and to have somebody have to be shot by the police, um, you know, for everyone's protection, you know, right outside of my house, but in this town in general, which is a very you know, quiet, family-friendly town. And KSP is heading up this investigation. At this point, it is unclear whether or not any officers involved will be placed on administrative leave in Jessamine County. Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The Jessamine County coroner says the autopsy and toxicology tests will happen tomorrow. He says Foster died from multiple gunshot wounds. The rain is back in the bluegrass. We've seen quite a bit coming through central Kentucky today and expect more tonight. WKYT's Mike Linden is tracking just how much rain we can expect to start off the work week. Well, Kristen, it looks like quite a bit, at least right now. Central Kentucky really hasn't seen very much rain until right now. Whereas some spots in western Kentucky nearing on an inch in the past 24 hours. Check out Live First Alert Defender. Certainly a lot busier than what it, what it looked like earlier this morning. Starting to see some heavy rain popping up. Just lines of heavy rain right now pushing into Fleming County. When you start to see these red and orange colors, that is the heavy stuff. And they're very... It's very scattered in nature right now. It's just not a widespread outbreak. Looking at Lawrence County, pushing into Woodford County along the BG Parkway, things are very wet right now. But all of the real, the really interesting stuff lies to the west of us. This is where we're tracking the thunderstorm with the cloud to ground lightning. This is in Hardin County, so still a ways away from the Lexington Metro, but that will soon continue to work its way eastward. You can see that over the past two hours, things have really gotten a lot busier thanks to that break in a, just a bit of sunshine earlier this afternoon, but that means more instability on the rise. So this is what it looks like from the sky. Low pressure continuing to feed in all of this instability from the Gulf of Mexico. And coming up in about 10 minutes, I'll show you what I'm tracking to move into the start of the work week. Just really messy out there, Kristen. Mike, Lexington police are continuing to investigate a break in at a storage center off Mall Road. The owner of Space Center told us a customer contacted police after noticing several units open. The owner says it looks like the thief used a crowbar to pry open nearly 50 of their units. Management asked all renters today to come check their units to see if anything is missing. Police are now trying to determine if there's any surveillance video that will give them a good description of the thieves. Lexington firefighters say smoke detectors saved a family this morning. An apartment on Davenport caught fire around 5.30. Firefighters believe it started in the kitchen. Crews were able to put out the flames, but say the home does have significant damage. They say the smoke detectors woke the family up, and they did get out of the home safely. 
Tomorrow, the two men accused of shooting and killing a UK student will be in court. 18 year old Justin Smith and 20 year old Efren Diaz are charged with murder in connection with the shooting death of 22 year old Jonathan Kruger. WKYT was there Friday when detectives transported both men to the Fayette County Detention Center. Both are scheduled to be arraigned tomorrow morning. The Kentucky Colonel is holding a memorial service for Jonathan Kruger tomorrow. The UK junior was the chief photo editor for the student run newspaper. The memorial is scheduled for 8 o'clock Monday night at Memorial Hall. Today, an Oklahoma City community honored the memory of those killed in the bombing of their federal building 20 years ago. Ryan Nobles shows us how the city is remembering the tragedy. One by one, the names were read out loud. Tony C. Reyes. 168 people killed on April 19, 1995, in the worst domestic terrorism incident in U.S. history. Raymond Lee Johnson. Thousands attended this solemn memorial to mark the two decades since the tragedy and to make sure the legacy of those killed in the attack will never be forgotten. When you strip away all the little things that divide us, it's important to remember how tied we are and how much we, all Americans, owe Oklahoma City. Former President Bill Clinton was in office when the bomb went off in 1995. Today, he marvels at how far Oklahoma City has come. For 20 years, you have honored the memories of your loved ones. You have inspired us with the power of your renewal. You have reminded us that we should all live by the Oklahoma standard. Then Governor Frank Keating oversaw the recovery effort. He believes that the bombing did not build the character of the people of Oklahoma. He said it revealed what was already there. I mean, it was just astonishing to me that it was a universal culture of sharing. Those who lived through the tragedy say the city will never be the same. Its people changed forever, but their resilience and commitment have never wavered. And this memorial demonstrates just how far they have come. In Oklahoma City, I'm Ryan Nobles reporting. Starting tomorrow, the school day is about to get a little longer for Fayette County students. The Fayette County School Board approved extending the school day 30 minutes beginning Monday. The longer days will continue through May 29th, the last day of school. School leaders say they're extending days to make up time missed because of snow and nasty winter weather. Fayette County schools missed seven days due to snow this winter. Also happening Monday, the deadline for new voters to register to vote in the May primary election. Kentucky has a closed primary election, which means you must be registered as either a Democrat or a Republican to take part in primaries. The primary election is scheduled for May 19th. Today, Keelan honored those who have served our country with Military Day at the races. Track leaders honored several members of the Army and National Guard at the racetrack, including Corey Remsburg, who was injured on duty and spent three months in a coma. He works hard and he likes to, to show that um, even if you're down and out, three and a half months in a coma, still can't walk, you're blind, be able to, to fight through that. And that shows a little bit of inspiration for somebody else to get through their day. Then, uh, then he feels that he's, he's added something. He's given back, and he believes that he wants to give back. All active and inactive members of the military got free general admission today to enjoy the races with their families. A UK group is collecting donations to help a war veteran get around campus. Veteran Matt Bradford suffered major injuries while serving in Iraq, resulting in the amputation of his legs. He's been borrowing golf carts to get around, and now one group of students wants to buy him his own. WKYT's Sean Moody has their story. Going off to college comes with its own set of challenges. On a big campus, there's a lot of walking. UK's campus makes for a pretty walk, but that walk's a pretty big challenge for some students. Matt Bradford is an Iraq War veteran. An IED blast took his vision and his legs. He started classes at UK last semester. I was worried about coming here because this is a huge campus. He says the school's Veterans Resource Center has done a lot to help him, but he said getting around on a borrowed golf cart was often unreliable. So Veterans Resource Director Anthony Dotson decided he should do something. I was hoping to, to throw this out there as a, as a gesture and see if anyone would donate a cart or, or deep discount a cart. Dotson was able to round up donations from organizations around campus. And Beaver golf carts made up the rest. Digital camo that they wanted with UK blue on it. Uh, veterans resource graphics on the side. 
to let everyone know that this car is affiliated with the Veterans Resource Center. Bradford says this car will make a big difference for him. Oh, good night. This is comfortable. This is like a lot more cushier than the Bring other one. Out. He'll have reliable transportation all over campus. And Donson says it'll continue to serve veterans here for years to come. <laughs> so in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Deaver golf carts say the cart that Bradford will soon have is worth about $7,500. Sure was smiling last night at least. Perfect weather allowed hundreds of thousands of people to line both sides of the Ohio River for Thunder Over Louisville 2015. A lot of red and a lot of green lit up the sky during the night's 30-minute fireworks show finale. And before the fireworks show, vintage aircraft and jets took to the skies. After thunder over Louisville comes two weeks of Kentucky Derby festivities.